Hello, I'm Leanne King, and I'm the first author of the article titled Maternal Depressive Symptoms Linked to Reduced Fecal Immunoglobulin A Concentrations in Infants. I am part of the Symbiota Research Team at the University of Alberta. This study uses data from the Canadian Healthy Infant Longitudinal Development Birth Cohort Study, known as the CHILD Study for short. Allergic disease prevalence is increasing in some parts of the world, particularly in North America. Several studies have reported links between psychological distress experienced by the mothers during or after pregnancy and childhood allergic disease. Given the emerging research on gut microbiome and allergies, we were interested to see if maternal distress during or after pregnancy is associated with changes in early life gut immunity in infants. Specifically, we looked at secretory immunoglobulin A produced in the gut, known as SIGA for short. SIGA is the main antibody for gut mucosal defense, which is provided to infants via mother's breast milk. Not only does SIGA block pathogens from penetrating the gastrointestinal tract, but it also helps our immune system recognize the difference between harmful substances and harmless food proteins in our gut. This is known as the induction of oral tolerance to food. As such, SIGA is critical to immune system maturation in infants and is thought to play a role in reducing the risk of allergic diseases. Our data came from the childbirth cohort, which recruited over 3,500 pregnant moms and their babies between 2009 and 2012. For our study, we used a subset of 403 infants who had stool samples available for analysis. With questionnaire data, we took two approaches for statistical analyses. The first approach used a non-parametric test to look for median differences between the maternal distress groups, prenatal only, postnatal only, and both pre- and postnatal, and the reference group of no maternal distress. The second approach was a binary logistic regression looking at the odds of having infant fecal SIGA in the lowest quartile levels, while taking into account of other confounding factors. Here is the SIG data for all infants in our study grouped according to maternal distress status. We found significantly lower SIG concentrations in infants born to mothers with both pre- and postnatal distress compared to the reference group. Then we split the infants into breastfeeding status during the stool collection period because breast milk is a major source of SIGA. In infants who are not breastfed, SIGA was significantly lower in infants born to mothers with both pre- and postnatal distress compared to the reference group. Among infants who were exclusively breastfed, SIGA concentrations were lower in the prenatal group compared to the reference group. Infants of mothers with pre- and postnatal distress had a threefold greater chance of having low fecal SIGA levels. Logistic regression analyses confirm that this greater likelihood could not be attributed to breastfeeding status or other maternal factors such as asthma status or SSRI use. On the other hand, maternal distress that occurred only in the postnatal period was not associated with SIG after we adjusted for breastfeeding status. This suggests that postnatal distress is affecting the duration of breastfeeding which is causing these infants to have less fecal SIGA. We conclude that infants born to mothers with both pre- and postnatal distress have lower fecal SIGA concentrations than infants from mothers without distress. Distress only in the postnatal period was not associated once breastfeeding was taken into account. Since lower fecal IgA in early life has been linked to future allergic conditions, Infants born to mothers experiencing distress may have a greater risk of developing diseases of the immune system. With these results, we would like to recommend greater support for mothers experiencing distress to encourage breastfeeding of their infants. Thank you.